Thank you for joining me again in another painting tutorial as we look at the classic Jez Goodwin sculpt of this Emperor's Children Chaos Marine. And I wanted to do something a little bit special for my customer as it's commissioned, so I thought I will take some purple ink that I have here from FW and some Vallejo Air Silver and mix it together. Then apply that to the model in all the areas that you want to paint it in a silver which for this model will be probably about 90% of the model, I think. Or a good 80% because most of it's going to be uh, painted in this silver purple armor. And I just went across there and painted most of its legs. All the power armor parts mainly. Uh, I, let, I left the other leg bare black because I wanted to do that uh, as a black with some gold studs and that kind of thing. Just to break up the, the silver on the model. And... Um, yeah, so it applied very well. I do like the Vallejo Silver, personally, from the Air Range Model Air. I think it's a really nice colour. And it, the ink in it didn't dull it too much, so it kept its sort of metallic vibrancy there. And now we're going to add some more ink as more of a wash. This time, as now the silver has dried, we're going to add a little bit of water there to the ink, just to water it down a little bit. And I'm going to basically concentrate on the shaded areas of the armor, making that uh, more darker and richer in those parts, and especially into those detail sections where it's been inscribed these faces and that kind of thing on the armor. I want to bring out those details more by adding some ink washes there. Once the ink has dried, I'm going to apply some straight silver here from the model air range, the base color we used, and I'm going to now use that just to highlight some of the areas on the armor, some of the raised areas especially, just to pick out some details, and also just to give some highlights to the metallic paint. Now to have these wonderful wall colors glazes, I'm going to use this purple glaze and I'm going to just add a little bit of water just to water it down a little bit and I'm going to actually tint the metallic surface here with a bit of that in the details, kind of like as a wash, but I just want to tint the outside of it so it gives more of a pinkish kind of feel to the, to the armor. I thought that'd be a really nice touch and I think in Retrospect, it was a good move. I think it, it looks really nice. It uh, gives more of that Slanesh kind of style to the armor. It doesn't have to be really this dark purple. It can be the sort of light purple, light purple metallic. So I think it's quite a nice, uh, quite a nice effect. Okay, so here we're going to add some War Colors Chaos Black, and I'm going to just now define all the areas which will be black, and just to clean up basically. So a bit of a clean up stage. So covering all the areas which I know are going to be black leather or they're going to be black in some way that I'll need to paint later. So they could be gold, they could be black, or they could be another color like green or something like that. I just want to just uh, define the areas which and separate the silver from the other colors on the miniature. Now just adding a bit of wall color skull white, I'm just going to add some bit of definition to the armor. Just using a fine brush, I'm just going to use a bit of that white just to outline the edges on some of the parts of the panels that are painted in metallics, just to give them just a bit of extra definition and detail. And I'll just do that on some of the sections on the leg plates and the edges of the armor, around the face, around the eyes, that kind of thing. And to highlight the blacks, we're going to use some Prussian blue or dark Prussian blue 
uh, Luffova World War II Grey and some Wolf Grey. Now these paints, if you don't actually have them in your collection, don't worry. You just find something that's going to be equivalent to it. So basically a, a very dark blue, a sort of dark blue grey and a light grey and that'd be just fine or just something that's uh, some kind of hue that's in between that. Right, so what we're going to start here with some black and some dark blue, add that as an underlay to the following highlights, adding more grey and wet blending it through to create these nice subtle transitions on the armor plating. Add lighter grey to this mixture in order to create a lighter highlight that then you can get, use your fine brush to then start lining in the details giving more definition to the areas which are black and giving more of a contrast between the lighter and darker areas of the model. Once we've done that, we want to add some more highlights here. We're going to add that with some wet blending here on the leg pad, especially. Now we come to the shoulder pads here, I'm going to need some more lighter grey here just to make this really nice uh, blend through on the shoulder pad. Now if you've got these big large open surfaces, they're big rounded parts of the surface of the model, like space wings, like terminators, anything in power armour have these kind of big large open spaces that if you want to create um, nice transitions and highlights, just thin out your paints create a nice blend on your palette between dark to light, work between the two and try to uh, you know, start from the top where the light will be coming from and then sort of just try to blend it through down to the bottom, thinning out the paint and then that will give this nice transition between light to dark. So I wanted to add a third colour here, so I'm going to add some jade green and some ivory mixing them the two together to create this really nice light green. I do like jade green actually for a lot of these uh, army projects to do with chaos. I think I think the jade green color just has this uh, luminescent sort of look to it and it, with you when you add it to ivory it has this really nice color to it. So I'm going to paint those all on this little iconography details on the front of his uh, chest armor here. Okay, now we come to one of the trickiest part of the model, and that's painting the eye lenses here on his Chaos helmet. I'm going to use the same green, so just paint those into the spaces of those lenses, which are, of course, base coated in black. Using a fine brush, I'm actually using a size 2 brush here, but I find that the uh, Rosemary Co. brushes, these brushes that I'm using are the blend between sable and um, artificial hair. And I find that really, really nice. Keep a fine point, and it gives me a lot of control when painting in these small areas. So I've just painted it with the a base of the 50-50 between uh, jade green and ivory as a base layer, adding more ivory now to add highlights down to the very bottom 
uh, recesses of the lenses and then I'm going to add some of this turquoise from uh, it's a turquoise glaze from War Colors and I'm going to add that to the top uh, of the lenses just to add more depth and more uh, more uh, contrast between the top and the bottom and uh, just continue to that until I find a very nice uh, transition between the two. Just using some pure ivory now, once the glazes had dried, I just sort of dotted in some lights at the very, very top of, and the top, like back corners of the lenses, just add some real sort of reflection points. Some pink on my palette now, I'm going to paint the icon, the Mark of Slanesh, on his shoulder pad. So just creating and painting and drawing in a small ball shape, something round and cylindrical to start off with, and then trying to line in the other parts of the icon as I go, just taking it easy and not rushing in it and just sort of making sure that the shapes look correct, they look you know in line with everything, and uh, if I need to go back and correct anything then I can use my mixture of it's like a mid-tone of the grey and the black together to just, just go through and just sharpen up things if I do need to. Okay, now we come to the part where I'm going to add some green flames to this part of the shoulder pad. And if you need, you know, practice doing this, try to draw it out on a piece of paper first before using it uh, on uh, as paint on your model. And basically, the same principles apply. So you're starting from the bottom to the top, and when you're using the paintbrush and the paint, just sort of apply a large, you know, sort of put the pressure on the tip of the brush at the base, and then sort of lift it uh, as you sort of wiggle the brush up to the top and that should create these nice sort of flame effects. And if you need to go back and sort of just correct, th correct things as you go, you, you know, you, you can do that, no problem. It will it'll take a bit of practice to get used to doing this, but once you get the hang of it, I think you should be quite, um, quite masterful at it. And now we get to uh, do a bit of, uh, bit of fashion work here on him and just use the hairline here and um, just to break up all that black and just give him a bit of extra focal point there on his hair so and that's been sort of a concurrent theme throughout the entire army really just giving lots of um, hair dye <laughs> to these wonderful cows warriors and then we're going to just highlight the black just using the the light gray we have on our palette I'm going to pick up an old gem. This is to me a color acrylic paint. This is gold leaf. Um, maybe you use this when you were 16, 17, or younger. I did when I was uh, first getting to painting, painting model kits and that kind of thing, using Tamiya. Now I didn't actually have any gold at this stage, so I, I bought this in a local uh, craft shop, and it's not the best stuff to use, but it does have a beautiful color. I love it. Some burnt umber. As an ink, we're going to use that. Just going to water it down a little bit because it's pretty heavy in pigment, and then just use that as a wash over the gold. And we are golden. Once the ink has dried, I'm just going to take some ivory and just sort of spot highlight sort of the top crests and areas of uh, the areas of the gold that I just want to give a little bit of highlights and just sort of um, again sort of sharpen up the gold areas of the model. Now 
we come to our favorite brand of ink, Rot Ring. Okay, so a video cannot be complete without a good old Rot Ring uh, uh, ink from Germany. So uh, thanks, Mum, for this because these have been absolutely brilliant. They've survived two decades, I think, now, and they're still going strong. So we're going to use that. This is much more of a, as you can see, much more of a violet kind of ink color, but this would be perfect just to get into those details of our armor, uh, just to darken that up a bit and just to enrich in those. Uh, particular areas and the silver will still shine through but it just I think it was just a really nice finishing touch and I'm just going to use that and very very sparingly and just place that just in little pockets and areas where I think it could be just more darker shade and it, again you can just see now how much that's really picking up the armor a lot and just really making it shine. And finally, we get to our Goblin Green base. We're almost there now, guys. So thank you very much for making it to the end of this tutorial. I hope you really enjoyed it. Again, thanks for your votes in the community section. And we can clearly see that people like these painting videos and they're helpful for, for people. And that's really what I really want to provide. Help, help you to get your miniatures painted um, to the best that you can and put them on the table. So thanks again for watching, guys. See you again in the next one. Bye-bye. Thanks again for watching the video guys, thank you for subscribing and liking and commenting on the videos, I really appreciate that. Remember to share the podcast and the videos to like-minded people who would enjoy this content. And if you'd like to support the podcast and the YouTube channel, then please consider becoming a Patreon. Thank you very much for watching, bye bye.